In this video, I would like to introduce you to the 12 principles of animation as described by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston that would potentially make you a better animator. Okay guys, today you're gonna do something different. I am sick of seeing newbie Minimator animations everywhere, so I'm gonna introduce you to something called the 12 principles of animation. These are the principles that every animator should know before even taking on annoying newbie Minimator animations. Now before we start, I'd like to ask you to show your support to the channel by subscribing or joining our Discord server. Also, feel free to check out our Twitter, it's all there. So I'm gonna name this 12 Principles of Animation, Author Sharpwind, Description, Create. Starting off with the first principle called Squash and Stretch. Now this principle mostly applies to 2D animation, but it can be used in 3D animation as well. Take a look at this ball. Now it looks completely normal, except that the ball deforms as it gets faster. And when it hits the ground, it gets flat. And then it extends again, and uh, slowly goes back up. Now the principle is used to deform objects with a greater amount of speed, or flatten them when they hit the ground. But take note, the overall volume of the ball has to remain the same. So when the ball stretches out, it also gets narrower. And when it flattens down, it also gets wider and repeat the process. Now the ball doesn't have to be stretched all the time, it only stretches when it reaches the certain amount of speed. But as I said, the principle is not essential in 3D animation, but you can use it if you want as well, because it looks nice. Now the second principle is called anticipation. The principle involves stopping action to build anticipation on what's gonna happen, so our brain has time to process what's going on and make the action seem more pleasant and powerful. For an example, take this running animation. Before the guy's gonna run, he's gonna wind backwards, then stop his action, and then start run. Also take note that the longer the action is stopped, the faster the guy can start moving right after. If we play this out now, we get this. Kind of old, kind of cliche, something like Walt Disney would do. This is a good example, but it's animated horribly. For example, take this punching animation. Before he makes a punch, he winds backwards and then lands the punch. That is also anticipation. The third principle is called staging. I'm gonna take the example of my old animation Divided, because basically this principle is all about making sure that the viewer knows what's going on. The setup of the characters, the lighting, the movement, like use a wider frame if a lot of action is going on so the characters have enough space for them to initiate the moves. Also, you wanna make sure what the character is looking at so the viewer can look at the same thing. You're basically directing the viewer's attention to where it was supposed to look at. For an example, like, if you want your viewer to look at the right, tell them that in the animation. Make your character turn right so the viewer knows where to look at. The fourth principle is called straight ahead and pose to pose. Now since this is 3D animation, this principle applies to 3D animation as well. But since you animate by keyframes, pose to pose is all you have. So in this case, it's always pose to pose. The difference between straight ahead and pose to pose is that in pose to pose you create poses, which the character then follows and creates a movement. Straight ahead would apply to particles because they're unpredictable and don't have a path to follow. The next principle is called overlap and follow through. It's a principle where some body parts are delayed from the others. For an example, the legs and the character move first, the body follows, and then the head and arms follow the body. After the character has stopped the motion, the body and the head keep going. Take a look at this animation here. When the blue guy bursts in the doors, his hands and body are offset from the legs. And when he jumps on the bed, the legs stop first and the body and the head are still wiggling on the bed. And this animation takes it even further. When he jumps on the bed, even the body motion is layered down to two parts. First the lower half of the body stops, while the upper half still goes. And after that, the head and the arms still follow. Slow in, slow out is a principle that applies to character movement to make it more realistic. The principle says that every move should start slow and end slow because that's the way of how all living things move. First you have to gain speed, you can't just start the motion with full acceleration. For an example, having linear movements look ugly. So applying a simple transition makes your move a lot nicer. But you have to be careful you use the correct one. For an example, you wouldn't add a slow out to a ball falling to the ground, but rather a ball bouncing back upwards. Or a slow in to a ball starting to fall. You can do that simply by clicking the object and giving it a transition. 
The seventh principle is called arcs. It talks about how all motion is traveling in arcs. Instead of a linear motion here, you should add an arc. Let's do just that. Instead of this keyframe up here, I'm gonna put the sphere in a folder. Now I'm gonna add a starting frame and the ending frame of the folder. As you see, the ball is just traveling vertically in a linear motion. But in the middle of the action, I'm gonna move the folder up. Now when I play it back, I get the same result as the first ball. But what's different is that the Y and the X motion are on the separate timeline. So I can simply ease the Y motion, but keep the X motion linear. If I play this now, we get a nice arc, which is much more realistic than this. But even the arms and legs travel in an arc, because our joints are made this way and this is just how nature works. Even the bends have their own arcs. Secondary action is a principle adding another action to your animation but the second action has to be subtle enough not to steal tension from the main action. For an example, take a look at this walking animation. The main action are his legs and the body, but the secondary action would be the head turning around and making the animation more lifelike. Secondary action means having more things moving at once, but having it clear enough so you know what the main action is and what the secondary action is. This is connected to the third principle called staging. Even with multiple actions in the shot, you have to know what the viewer is gonna look at. You have to direct the viewer's view to that certain action that you want. Secondary action could be anything from whistling, playing pong, and even rotating windmills outside. The principle of timing means having your objects move at a regular speed, which means not to have your ball move like this, or like this, by having a realistic lifelike tempo to all your movements. Now in 2D animation that means also calculating how many frames you have to input in the video, but in 3D animation it's not like this. I usually play the timeline out and imagine the movement on the screen. When I get the time that I want, I try to make it like so, but in the end I also adjust when something doesn't seem right. Exaggeration means exaggerating the animation either by design or by content. This here would be a perfect example of the content exaggeration. There's no way an anvil can just squash the character like this. Exaggeration by design would mean something else. Solid drawing means being able to draw your character from all perspectives. In 3D animation that doesn't apply because the objects are already being rendered in a 3D space. That includes being able to draw it from every perspective, on every distance, and even animate their arms and legs like this. And finally, appeal. This principle is all about giving your character some personality just by the looks. Now this here looks like a happy innocent little girl, which you can tell she's happy and curious just by the looks. You can achieve that with a kind smile, big pupils, a lovely haircut, bright colors, which doesn't apply in this case, and simply a warm touch. Now this principle also applies to the bad characters, like this looks like a mean, rough, manly dude, and he looks like the person that beats people up, even lovely innocent girls. So guys, that's all I have for the 12 principles of animation in 3D animation. I hope you've learned something and I hope this helps you be a better animator. Because honestly, I'm also sick of seeing newbie animators everywhere. So thank you for watching, I hope this helped you, and uh, good luck animating. See you next time, stay sharp!